Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. We've got a beautiful spring day in Southern Oregon here, and I'm ready to make a new quilt. This is a pattern called Tropical Breeze, and it uses fat quarters. So we have some fat quarter bundles. We're going to do either the baby or the throw size. We'll see how many fat quarters we have. And then we will pick out some border fabrics and then we'll get this quilt started. Hi everyone. Today we're going to be picking out some fat quarters to use on the pattern that Donna picked out. So I recently got in some beautiful products from Hoffman Fabrics, Batik Fabrics. And there are some fat quarters that we ordered, some sets. And over here in these larger square boxes, this is how they come. We have the different colors. We have parrot, cockatiel. I know we have a color called sparrow and a couple others. I'm looking forward to taking a good look at those with Donna and picking out something for her project. Okay, Donna. They're, they're, yeah, they're in this size box, as you know. All right. I saw a couple on the other side. I'll see. All right, I've got cockatiel. Okay, how about sandpiper? Uh, do you have, um... Donna, here's what I found on the other side. I have hummingbird, sparrow, and sandpiper. Okay, all right. This is really pretty forest green, Donna. You know I like the forest greens. They look good. Oh, wow. Yeah, this is beautiful colors, but you know there's not going to be enough contrast. You got it. In yeah, that I, one. I know what you're saying. There's not enough variety there, is there? No. Donna, we've been looking at these. What's your choice? I really like this one. I agree 100%. That's, that's the one. <laughs> so this is the one we'll, we'll use. This is the, um, let's see. I think it's got the name on the oh, hummingbird. hummingbird. Great. All right. That's the one. Great. Great. The first thing we're going to need to do is to open this up and iron all the fat quarters really, really flat. You always want to have everything nicely ironed before you cut it. That way your cuts will be much more accurate. So we're gonna use all 16 of these fat quarters. The pattern we're doing, so we could do a baby quilt with 12. If you have 12 fat quarters, you will get 12 blocks. If you have 20 fat quarters, you will get 20 blocks. That's what they're showing here. It's a four by five block quilt. I have 16 fat quarters and I'm not gonna add any more to this. So I'm just gonna make a square quilt. I'll be able to make 20 blocks. Have all of the fat quarters ironed really flat and stacked up and they are all going to get cut with exactly the same sub cuts. Now there's 16 of them and I can't comfortably cut 16 layers so I'm going to do two separate cuttings. All the numbers are in the pattern. This is again not my pattern so I can't give you all of the cut sizes but Cozy Quilt Designs makes it really easy to follow their pattern so I'm gonna get all the sub cutting done, then we can start sewing. That's the fun part. <laughs> to make this pattern, we are going to build two blocks, two different blocks. The first block is in the center of each one of these blocks. It's that block that's on the diagonal right there. And that's made up of these pieces. We have center squares here, and then we're gonna take these strips and we're gonna build around. And we are going to stitch them on and then trim as we go. That's not a method I use a lot. I normally cut all my pieces to size, but this is how the pattern tells us to do it. And it's a, it's a good method. It also is a good way if you have extra scraps laying around and you want to um, cut some and fit them into the pattern. Very easy to do it this way. The second block we're going to make is from these wider strips and wider center squares. And that is going to be the outside here. So we're actually going to make a whole block 
and then we're going to cut it in half on the diagonal and that's how we're going to get this section that goes around the center piece guy. So I'll show you all the steps, but before I do that, we need to sort our strips a little bit so that every block has different colors in it. I've selected all of the fabrics that will go in each one of these blocks. And so I tried to get three distinctly different colors of fabric for each block. So this is going to make one of those blocks that goes in the center of each of the bigger blocks. So we've got 16 of these blocks here. Now we have to make the outside blocks. So we're gonna just select these, try it again, again to get the opposite color to what's in here, but something that will look good. So I will usually lay these out like this, and then when I'm done, I will sometimes trade them around. So I'm gonna just put an opposite color on everything, and then if I don't like the way everything looks, I will switch them up a little bit. Now we're ready to get started sewing. This is our center square. This is going to go around it, and then this is gonna go around that. So we are going to take this strip, and even though it came in the fat quarter with a pretty straight cut there, it might not be perpendicular. It might be curved, curved, unstraight, or not perpendicular. So I'm going to fold it back on itself and line up the edges very carefully. And then I'm just going to put my scissors in there and get a nice straight cut. So I'll be doing all these cuts right here at the sewing machine. Now we know it's got a 90 degree angle there. We're gonna put that on top of this and just stitch it on with a quarter inch seam. I'm gonna sew right off the end, just like that. Now I'm going to use the same method to get a 90 degree angle. I'm gonna fold this back so that the end, the fold is even with the fabric there. Then I'm going to just use my scissors and I'm gonna put the blade all along that fold and then just cut. Now we're going to sew onto the other side, same method. So you can veer right off there. And again, fold this so that the fold is even with your center square there and then just cut right along there. So I find it easiest to put my scissors right in there and cut. If you want, you can finger press that, open it up and cut along that fold line, whatever's easier for you. I just think this is neater and I have no chance of cutting my center square at all. Now I'm going to open this up and I'm just going to finger press. You can iron it if you like. Batik's finger press so nice and flat that that's gonna work for me. Now I'm gonna sew onto the top and bottom here. That's the whole first piece all the way around. Now we're going to do the same thing with these pieces here. We have the center of our first block all done. Now we are going to take it over here because these are the parts that are gonna go around this. We're going to make two blocks, cut them in half, and they will fit around here. So I need to pick something that will look good up against here. Something that has a little bit of contrast color. That's contrast, but it's the same fabrics. That's too much the same color. This one would actually look really good. So both these fabrics are going to end up being against this print. So that's how I'm selecting this block. This block is even easier. We're going to make two blocks that are exactly the same. And each block has a center and then this fabric around all four sides. I've got these two blocks all stitched up. Now we're going to press them nice and flat. 
then we're going to cut them in half. Now we're going to cut each of these in half along the diagonal. And the best thing to do is to put your ruler on these two points because your block may not be perfect yet, but the center here is a square. So we're gonna line that up on these two corners, not these two. We're going to be squaring up our whole block when all of the patchwork is done. So line that up, be brave, cut right across your patchwork. Now we'll do the same thing over here and then we'll stitch them on to the center block. Here are the corners that are going to fit onto this block. So we're gonna sew these two on and then we're going to sew these two on. So what we need to do is we need to center this. So I find that I can center it by looking at that. If you like, you can fold this in half and mark the center and you can fold the block in half and mark the center, but you really can eye it up well enough just like this. It's best if you put this on the bottom and this on the top because this is bias here and it's going to want to stretch unless we're careful. But if you say it, set it on the part that has the straight grain, it won't stretch. Now we're going to turn around and we're going to put this one on this side. It helps if you open that up so that you can tell if you're in the center. You really can tell. I've got it way too high there. So you can just eye it up. You can tell when you're in the center. I am going to just finger press this slightly right at the tips here. And then I'm going to take my next piece and I'm going to eye it up in the middle here. and stitch this on. And you'll find that you've got about a quarter inch seam. I mean, we're using a quarter inch seam, but it just about hits right at that intersection. Now these blocks are oversized. We are going to be trimming all of them down afterwards. So they're a little bit bigger than is necessary. And that's good because if you didn't perfectly center your piece here, it won't matter. Now I'm gonna iron this flat. And you will see that my block did not come out perfect. If it came out perfect, this would be all one line. And that's okay because we are now going to trim it down to size. So this is the first block I've finished. Normally as I go through the quilt, I get better and better as I go. But this one is close enough because we've got quite a bit more than the quarter inch we're going to use here. The block needs to be trimmed to 12 and a half inches. I like to measure from the center over half of that amount, which is six and a quarter. Now my ruler is only six inches wide, so I'm just going to guesstimate that I'm a quarter inch over from this intersection and that intersection. And then I'll cut all this extra off over here then we will measure the block 12 and a half inches wide to make our second cut. Now that the first side is cut straight, I'm going to turn it around and place it on one of the lines on the cutting board. And I'm going to measure over 12 and a half inches, which is right here. And cut off the excess here. Then we'll do the same thing for these two sides and then our block will be nice and accurate. I've got two of the blocks done now. You can see how nice they look. They're all perfectly 12 and a half inches because we trimmed them to size after they were sewn and we've still got plenty of seam allowance here for when we sew the blocks together. So I'm going to make the rest of the blocks, lay them out, see what's going to look good for a border and then get the whole quilt quilted. Here's the Tropical Breeze quilt. A lot of fun to make. This is what I call a today quilt. I didn't make it today. I actually made it in two days, but it's a two day quilt. Really, really quick. 
it works best if you have a variety of colors, at least three colors, because then you get this effect of one block on top of another block. Gives it some dimension. We used 5 eighths of a yard here and 1 and 5 eighths of a yard for the border. Really fun batik on the back. Swirly quilting pattern. Very, very satisfying to make. And these are my colors. I love the purples and greens. And this one just really, really speaks to me. Now, this is a little bit smaller than the throw size called for in the pattern. The throw size would have taken 20 fat quarters. I only had 16, but for every fat quarter that you have, you can make the equivalent of one block. So I made 16 blocks and mine is square and turned out to be, a, it's about, it's 64 inches square, a really nice size. Thanks for watching our tutorial today on the Tropical Breeze quilt. I hope you enjoyed it. My daughter Monica has one more thing to add. Hi everyone, my name is Monica Jordan and we are doing another giveaway. This time it's our Curve French General Table Runner Kit. So as you can see, the log cabin blocks have a nice little curve to them. It has some awesome quilting from our long arm quilting machine, nice binding. And if you wanna win this table runner, just click on the link in the description or pinned in the comment to this video. And that'll take you to our website where you enter your name, email, and you'll be entered to win. We can ship this worldwide. So wherever you are, enter to win this table runner and good luck.